Hey Pete here for Studio Live today and in this GarageBand for iOS quick tip, I'm gonna show you how you can use the copy and paste functions to make your workflow simpler, your arrangements easier and your projects better. Let's go. Okay, so I know you might be thinking copy and paste isn't that a little bit simple, but what I wanted to show was the power that you have being able to use copy and paste. So I'll show you a couple of very simple things, and then I'll show you some slightly more advanced ways to use copy and paste in your arrangements here in GarageBand. So the absolute simplest thing that we can do is to copy one part or one section and paste it to create the same. So if you're writing a song that has multiple verses, multiple choruses, the same part repeated with the same instrument, you don't want to be sitting down and recording that same part, especially if it's something here, like this song here, we have a bunch of strings and piano. We don't want to have to be redoing those because they're a virtual instrument anyway. So there's an argument that says it should be played manually every time. But let's be honest, a lot of the music that's created these days, electronic music in particular, doesn't need that uh, individual flair on every single section. So we do want to copy and paste some sections. So this is my track called Turn Back from my 2017 EP. And this one here has a lot of strings, as I mentioned before. So this part will just slide out here and I'll just play you this section of string here. So this is during the chorus, this little pizzicato part here, which is joined by its friend down here. So what I want to do is, uh, sorry, I'll play that in context so you can hear that, how that sounds with the chorus. Don't turn back. It's a waste of your time. So there you go. And what we have is that we actually repeat that down here. So for this particular one here, I have copied and pasted that to make it go there. So what I'm going to do now is I'll just delete this one just to show you the process to copy and paste. And it is as simple as this is we're going to tap on here. We're going to tap again. We're going to tap copy. Then we're going to line up our playhead. Now the playhead's really important because you need to make sure the playhead is right on the start of the bar you want to paste to. So here we need it to be on bar 57.1, which just means the first beat. We're going to tap, we're going to tap again, lots of tapping in GarageBand, and we're going to hit paste. And there you go, you can see it's been slotted right in there because there's our eight bar of our chorus, there's our eight bar of our chorus, and it's right there ready to go. Now something related to copy and paste that's not quite the same is the loop function. So you'll notice here that I've actually used loop on this part. So let's just solo that. So these are my uh, cello, I think, uh, the longer bowing technique. And again, we've got eight bars of it, but I wanted three lots of this. So what I could have done is we'll just undo what I have done here. We'll take looping off. I'll show you how to put that back on. I could go here and I could tap, I could copy, I could tap again, I could paste, I could tap again and tap again, I could paste. So then we'd have three copies of that same part. But what the problem here is, if I make a change to any one of these three, it's only going to make it to that particular one. If I wanted to change a particular note or the timing of a note, I'm going to have to do that in every one. And if you've got, say your progression has eight of these eight bars, then yeah, you're going to have to spend a lot of time doing that. So let's delete these ones now. Now I'll show you a little function for selecting. If I tap out anywhere outside, so I'm not on a particular part, you see I've got this flashing square and now I can actually loop that around any part that's sitting next to it. So here, I'm just gonna slide it across, draw a rectangle around these two, tap, tap again, hit delete. And there we go. So what I now actually want to do is I want to loop this part. Now this is gonna get a little bit messy, but bear with me. So we'll tap on it and then we're going to go to settings and we're gonna tap looping and whoa, yes. So what there is, is there's no way to tell it how far you wanna go with looping. So it's gonna put it right to the end of whatever section you're in. Another good reason to use sections. If you don't, um, check out my video on sections. This song doesn't have sections, so it's not relevant. But if you did have sections, it would only go to the end of that section. We grab this loop though, handle at the end here. Actually, I'll let go. That was the zoom function. If you tap and hold for too long, it'll zoom in, which is really good for fine editing, but we don't want that here. So let's just tap and hold and drag this back, 
to the spot that we want, which is here. And now you can see that we have the original idea here, the original eight bars, and it's just looped or repeated for the following eight bars. So uh, actually, have I got that right on the spot? No, I don't quite have that right on. So again, it's really important that you get your playhead, or sorry, in this case, your edit point in exactly the right spot. Now, if we wanted to edit this, we can tap and we can edit it, but what you'll notice here is we've got the first section here, but the rest are grayed out. So if I move a particular note, look what happens. It changes that across all of these sections. So let's just plop it back. You can see it changes across the section. So if you've got a pattern that's gonna be repeated, that you're working on and writing, it's really handy because it means you don't have to change that again and again. Of course, if you do want variety, then this is not the method for you. You do want to copy and paste or re-record your part. Okay, let's move on because one of the questions that I get is that's fine for virtual instruments or things that start and line up right on the grid, but what if you've got, say, a vocal that doesn't line up right on the grid? So for this song here, I've got my lead vocal here and you can see that for whatever reason, I've chosen to edit it in such a way that these points here are not lined up right on the grid, which means if I go to copy and paste it, it's gonna be really hard to copy and paste one section to another spot because I'm not gonna know exactly where it should start and finish. But that is no problem because GarageBand uses something called non-destructive editing. So what non-destructive editing means is even if I've made a cut, a split, a trim, if there is audio that exists there, it's still there. So for this one in particular here, if I wanted to now do some editing on this, all I need to do is tap and hold on the edge here and trim it back to the start here. And it hasn't actually changed the audio there, it's just given us a little bit of additional, that, that space before that I'd already cut out has come back. So if we play it now. This moment last, don't turn you can see, see or hear, that it is still there. There's no problem there. Um, so the reason I've done that is that I wanted to use this version of the chorus back, sorry, other way around. I wanted to use this second chorus to play in that first chorus. So I've got the same problem here. So I'm just gonna tap and trim that back right onto the marker there, onto the bar marker. And now these are gonna be exactly the same size. This one uses two pieces of audio, but it's still the same number of bars. So. Well, let's show you now how, if I wanted to replace this chorus with the second chorus, if I believe I sung it better, and keep in mind, I don't recommend this with vocals. Guitars, probably better get away with bass guitars, drum lines, vocals, you probably want to do it differently. But if you're just doing your arrangement of your song, and this wasn't your final version, then this is a good technique to just fill out your parts to see how things are gonna sound. So once again, let's use a different method here to select and delete. So uh, I showed you the box method like that, where you can just drag a box over anything. The other way is that you can actually select multiple items by tapping the first one, then tapping and holding and tapping any other items. So you can do this with however many items you want. Let's do it again, tap and hold. If I want to select multiple items across multiple tracks, I can do that. And now anything I do, copy, paste, settings is going to impact all of those tracks but for now we just want to tap and tap the second one and let's just delete these now so where we want to come in here is bar 25 so let's come down here we'll grab our second chorus we're going to copy we're going to come back here to right on bar 25 and once again make sure you're lined up right on the bar and tap tap again hit paste and there you go, so it's lined it up perfectly. And now if we did wanna make that same sort of edit, we can bring that in here without any problems. And it's going to actually line up perfectly just like this. To make this moment last, don't turn back. And there you go. So let's just show you one more thing here. I'm just gonna undo this and send it back. Go back to where you came from. And there we go. So now we're back with this one. Now. Let's say for whatever reason, we had done editing in such a way that this couldn't go uh, backwards. So we couldn't go back to bar 25. I don't know why we'd be in this situation because you can usually go back, but let's just say that we can't for argument's sake. And we still wanted to do the same function well. There's a way around that as well because once again, we have non-destructive editing. All we need to do is choose another bar marker. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is tap and drag to the second bar, right on there. And if I play this back, you'll hear that it'll come in sort of partway through the chorus. So you're like, well, that's not gonna work, right? Well, we can make it work. So let's do our same trick down here. 
Oh, we have these both selected, by the way, which is why these are now separated out here. But anyway, we're going to delete them for this purpose. So it doesn't matter. We'll tap, we'll hit delete. So we know we want to come in on bar 25. But in this case, we're going to bring it in on bar 26 because we've had to do this change. Where are we? We've lost our spot. To uh, forget what I have done. Don't turn back. Okay, so here we are. Um, so what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to drag over to bar 58. And now I'm one bar into where that vocal should be. So let's tap this now. Let's copy it. Let's come back down here. And instead of being right on that bar 25, I'm going to pop it on bar 26. I'm going to tap. I'm going to tap again. I'm going to hit paste. And now we've got this same problem here. But what we can do is just drag back this audio to be right on the spot we need it. And let's play now. I will try my best to make this moment last. Don't turn back. And hooray, it worked. So that's a way that doesn't matter where you have done your edit points. You can, because of non-destructive editing, you can drag out any of these parts because all the audio is still there of all of these takes. So if you've ever wondered why it does this when you do this, it's because any splits or cuts that you make, just undo that because that's going to be a bit weird, any splits and cuts that you do are not actually destroying the audio, non-destructive editing. It's a very cool feature. Most DAWs or digital audio workstations have it. GarageBand is one of them. So that's some good tips, I hope. I hope you found those useful and that you can help, they'll help you out when you're doing your editing in your GarageBand projects. If you've got any additional questions about copying, pasting, or editing, uh, you can check out my other videos, which are linked in the description below, or of course, leave comments, questions, and suggestions. Now, it's starting to rain, as you can probably hear in the background, so I'm gonna go. I'll see you on the next video.